Ladies and gentlemen, it is truly an honor on behalf of the Radio Television News Directors Association of Canada to present Mike Critch with an RTNDA Lifetime Achievement Award. Well, the, uh, the first thing I want to do tonight, before I do anything at all, is to uh, congratulate Terry Scott, the president of the RTNDA, who is uh, ending his term of uh, duty, work, service, I think with this function, if not pretty soon. And I really believe he deserves a round of applause. Let him have it. Got a couple of notes, sir. Details are not scanty. And, uh, uh, it's a beautiful award, and it's particularly apt at this particular time. Here we go. I wonder who owns it. Okay. And that is uh, this award we're talking about, that it comes during Senior Citizens Month, which is this one, June. Yeah, that's true, Jerry. And uh, as I am a senior, senior citizen, I really appreciate it. It's also a high honor, and without kidding around at all, I must say I'm very touched, very touched indeed. But uh, I would like to mention that had I been turned down for this award, maybe they found a couple of things I had that I shouldn't have, or vice versa, something like that. I didn't get it. It would still be an honor to me to realize that I had been nominated by Jerry Fail. And that's really something. I had the great good fortune to work with Jerry for several years. And um, good writer, good voice, does it all very well. One thing I remember about him, and I can continue with it, and that's his concern for people, his concern for staff and people all around him. I never saw the man get upset, get mad, or curse and swear and shout and yell, as we usually do. But uh, he's a man all the way, and I, I want to bring that out. That is just as important to me as getting the war, so help me. Sure, you're a damn good guy. Oh yeah, something else I want to do, I didn't have the opportunity to do, and that's to congratulate um, Vince Gallant, who was the first Newfoundland winner of that award, I believe. And uh, Vince has broadcasts everywhere. His voice is known all over North America, I believe. And he's just as good today as he was the first time I heard him. That was many, many, many years ago when Scott Shave still had black hair. <laughs> I've been looking at all this wonderful stuff they've written about Baz, you know? <laughs> and it's all true, and you could write more and more and more, you know? And it would never end. But uh, I go back a long way, even longer than Baz, if that's you can next week. And uh, the, first, uh, uh, the first time I saw you, I think, you were operating that manual elevator in the old Newfoundland Hotel. Isn't that right? <laughs> yeah. And Baz was so high and so forth. And he tells the story of those days. That was a long time ago. And they weren't particularly happy days. When he, uh, you'd buy at the restaurant the favorite meal, beans on toast, for 20 cents. <laughs> and he had a good friend down there who was a sportscaster, Aubrey Mack. A little off center, but a nice guy. <laughs> and he, 
uh, Baz would wait until he got a tip during the elevator. Sometimes during the day he might build up and up until eventually he got 20 cents. And that's what the sandwich cost. And then he got on the telephone, he got Aubrey Mac down there, and he shared a sandwich. And Baz always points out, had it not been for beans on toast, he never would have survived. <laughs> True. So um, I really want to congrat congratulate Baz Jameson. I mean, he's got a tremendous career, wonderful person. All hands speak well of him. And I'm sure years from now, when we're all finished, somewhere out there in that big sky, we'll hear the plaintive question, that you, Baz? <laughs> okay, I'll uh, we'll continue here. Must, there must be something else. One thing I'd like, I'd like to, uh, to uh, touch on. Somebody wrote a long time ago, I think it was Bob Power, behind every successful man, there stands a good woman. Behind every failure, still another. <laughs> Sometimes I believe in gatherings such as those, and when we get together, and when we do our talking, you know, what we did and what we're going to do and what he did and what he didn't do. We kind of forget the women. And yet, the women, we depend so much, the support of the women. And I'm talking particularly my own wife there and all the wives who happen to be here and all the girlfriends and all the rest of it, the early morning breakfasts, the late nights, the god-awful weekend shifts, nobody knows where they're going or when they're getting back and so forth and so on. And I think all of this, I'm sure you agree with me, we owe an awful lot to the good women that we associate with. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> I'd like to touch on a more serious note here that um, one thing about radio that I remember, been a long time ago now, a long time added, and uh, the friends that you make in radio, at radio, in radio, and outside radio, but because of radio, and as I look around me down at the table down there, I come up here and I shoot over there, down here in the back, I don't want to mention your names today, God, night, but uh, the great friendships we firm, that we firm, that we make, and that we continue through our lifetime. Something comes to mind, a bit of Shakespeare, what the hell I'd say it anyway. And uh, the friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel. And I'm sure we made many hoops in Radio Land, and I'm sticking with them. Uh, it's great to be here, it's wonderful. It's a great honor to get this award. I appreciate it very much. And I hope to see you all again soon, somewhere along the line. And now with your kind permission, and I know you're going to give it to me. <laughs> for the last time, I promise by the very last time, this is my crate for the VOCM News Service. Thank you, thank you.